We all know physical fitness is important as we age, but so is financial fitness. Yet we often skip our financial workouts even more than we skip our physical ones. The result is financial flabbiness. Today, we're going to show you how to get in shape and stay there. That's because it's never too soon to prepare for retirement. In fact, the earlier you start to prepare, the easier it is to save. We know very few Americans have a plan for retirement savings that will actually cover their desired lifestyle. So, we'll focus on the importance of setting aside time to understand your retirement needs and making a plan to meet them. Before we talk about your retirement workout, let's review where this country is right now. Here's a hint. We're not in good shape. Almost half of all U.S. households don't have anything specifically saved for retirement. When we counsel Americans about their retirement and they tell us they have nothing saved, they often say they aren't worried. I'll live off my social security, they say. Sadly, that's very hard to do, and it's downright impossible if you live in a high-cost area. Last year, the average social security check was just over $1,500 a month, which adds up to just a little over $18,000 a year. Ask yourself, could you live on that? Especially as you age and your health care costs grow along with inflation. Reasons like these are why the St. Louis Fed declared that it could be worrisome that many Americans won't have enough money for a solid life in retirement. Those are actually strong words from these members of the Federal Reserve, who are usually pretty reserved in the way they speak. Americans themselves speak in harsher terms. Nearly half of all Americans over the age of 60 admit they're afraid of outliving their savings. And that's just one poll from last year. Another one by a bank called Northwestern Mutual asked a sample of all working age Americans when they think they'll retire. Almost half, 46%, predicted they'll need to keep working well past 65 years old just to make ends meet. Okay, enough with the depressing statistics. You get the idea, right? Retirement is hard for most of us to save for, but regardless of your age, it's not impossible. In fact, like any workout, you get out of it what you put into it. Unfortunately, like a lot of workouts, the hard part is all front-loaded. In other words, you don't notice the results right away. But once you do, it's easy to stay motivated and chart your progress. So, let's get started. When you start any workout, it begins with measurements. How much do you weigh? What's your standing heart rate? Without data like that, you might push too hard or not push hard enough. Well, the same thing happens when you get into what we call retirement shape. We need to assess where you are now so we can design a personalized plan to get you financially healthy. Let's review our key numbers. Everyone's heard the term credit score and everyone knows it's important. Beyond that, only a few people really understand why it's so important. Sure, they might know that the higher their credit score, the lower the interest rate they'll be charged for a mortgage or car loan. And they probably know they might not get a good credit card with a lousy credit score. But a credit score is also a sign of solid financial health. Why is that? Because the folks who determine your credit score use several measurements to come up with your number. 65% of our credit score comes down to two questions. How much debt do you owe and how often do you pay your bills on time? So, if you can trim back on your total debt and make your payments on time, your score will soar. While a 700 is considered good, most Americans fall somewhere between 650 and 750. But even more importantly, it's a sign that you're getting financially healthy and freeing up cash that can be put towards retirement. While almost everyone has heard about credit scores, very few people know what a debt-to-income ratio is. Called DTI for short, it's a number that your lenders certainly know well. They use it to determine if you get that credit card or mortgage. To figure out your DTI is simple. Just divide your monthly debt payments by your monthly gross income. Lenders use the resulting percentage to decide if you're willing and able to pay off future loans. Let's say you add up all your debt payments above and it comes to $2,500 a month. Now, let's suppose you earn $7,000 a month. When you divide the debts into the earnings, you get 0.357, or about 36%. That's your DTI. Ideally, you want it under 28%, because lenders like that. But whatever your DTI is, it's nice to know where you stand. This number requires very little math. It's just assets minus liabilities. Basically, everything of value that you own subtracted from everything you owe. If your net worth is upside down, 
meaning you owe more than you own, that's a big warning sign. You need to get into financial shape now. Bad things happen to even the best people. So even as we talk about whipping you into retirement shape, you still need a cushion so you land softly after a layoff, illness, accident, or natural disaster. That's why all financial experts say you need an emergency fund. But those same experts disagree on the dollar figure. Some insist you need several months of living expenses set aside just in case. Other experts acknowledge that most Americans just don't have enough money to do that, especially when they're paying steep interest rates on their credit card balances. For our purposes, we're going to side with those who say $1,000 is enough. For now. Once we complete your retirement workout plan, we'll urge you to slowly increase this last, but certainly not least, key financial number. Okay, now that we've completed the initial assessment, let's talk about flexing some financial muscle. We just hit you with a bunch of numbers, and your results might not be so good, but don't get discouraged. That's what workouts are for. They slowly improve your conditioning. Now, let's look at what's holding you back, and how to push right past them. Financial literacy is just the fancy way of saying learning more about your money. In fact, we just tackled some of that in the previous section where we discussed concepts like debt-to-income ratio and emergency funds. If you want to keep up your financial literacy, it's not difficult. Consolidated Credit has easy-to-digest financial lessons that can help you save money on everything from traveling without debt and merging your finances after marriage. If there's a situation in your life that involves money, Consolidated Credit has had more than a quarter century of experience while helping you do it cheaper. If you don't stretch before you work out, you can easily pull a muscle. Well, if you don't budget before you get into financial shape, you'll definitely hurt yourself. Budgeting isn't as hard or as boring as you might think. These days, it's easier than ever to keep track of your expenses and figure out ways to save. There's a bunch of secure online programs and apps that do the math for you. Each are different enough that you can find the one that fits your personality. For instance, Mint has been around for a long time and syncs with your bank accounts and credit cards, letting you see your daily spending in a cool, clean graphic. Tiller is more do-it-yourself. It's a set of customizable spreadsheets that still do the work for you. Envelopes is digital, but essentially dumps your expenses into envelopes you can manipulate. All of these programs help you not only keep track of your cash, they help you figure out how to squeeze out more savings. Best of all, most of them are free, and the ones that do charge save you more than they cost. We encourage you to take one or more for a test drive. This might seem obvious, but we're talking about a certain kind of debt. If you have a mortgage with a low interest rate and monthly payments you can afford, you might be building more equity in your home than you're spending. That's good debt. What's bad debt? Credit cards. The average interest rate on a credit card in this country floats between 14 and 19 percent. If you carry a balance, and almost 4 in 10 Americans do, that's a lot of money you're just handing to someone else for the privilege of buying stuff. Cutting down on credit card debt is the number one way to shake loose money for retirement. We all agree that we should spend wisely. It's like saying we should all eat healthy. But we all have our moments of weakness. When it comes to spending, some of us need the latest smartphone or fashions, even if our current tech and clothes are perfectly fine. In fact, most needless spending is caused by one thing, vanity. We want to impress our friends and even total strangers. But guess what? Retiring comfortably is the best way to fill everyone with jealousy. Stop buying stuff to make you look good in front of others. Save now so you can feel good later. Do you buy a daily cup of coffee from Starbucks or Dunkin' Donuts? Do you go out to lunch most workdays? Are you paying for phone service you're not using? Is your home insulated so you're not heating and cooling nature? Do you use coupons as much as you should? Many of us don't really tighten up our spending because, hey, it's just a few pennies here and there. But it really adds up each month, year, and decade. It's amazing how much less you can pay for almost everything if you just pay attention. Once you jump those barriers, time to hunker down and save for retirement. Here are your goals, broken down by decade. Now, the experts who designed these goals know quite well that many Americans won't hit them easily right away. Or even maybe at all. But without goals, there's no progress. And if you save money like we've been talking about, you can get out of debt and start focusing on retirement. The easiest way to save for retirement is with other people's money. 
namely your employer. If your workplace offers a 401k, pounce on it. Thankfully, nearly half of all employers offer these match programs according to the federal government. Sometimes these employers chip in a quarter or 50 cents to every dollar you deposit into your 401k, but there's a limit, up to 6% of your salary. Still, it's free money. Two other restrictions, one about withdrawals and the other about deposits. First, if you try to take money out before 59 and a half, you face a tax penalty. Second, you can't contribute more than $19,000 in 2019, although that limit keeps creeping up. Last year, it was $18,500. Best of all, you're not taxed on your contributions until you take them out, which means more money is earning interest instead of going to the IRS. We could do an entire presentation just on 401ks, and we just might someday. But for now, we urge you to explore this incredibly powerful option if it's available to you. IRAs are also powerful retirement tools, although not quite as powerful as 401ks. For instance, a traditional IRA makes you wait to 70 and a half to make withdrawals without a penalty, compared to 59 and a half for a 401k. For a Roth IRA though, there is no age requirement. But if that Roth IRA isn't five years old, you'll pay a penalty. There are other differences too, like you must start making withdrawals on a traditional IRA at the age 70 and a half. But a Roth IRA has no required stating age for disbursements. Like 401ks, all IRAs have a maximum yearly contribution you can make. For 2019, it's $6,000 for both types. IRAs are available from your bank and even from many employers. While most folks have heard of 401ks and IRAs, not everyone knows what an HSA is and how it can help you. HSA is short for Health Savings Account, and it kind of works like an IRA. It's a great way to save for medical expenses and reduce your taxable income. Many health insurance providers offer HSAs. If yours doesn't, you can open a separate HSA account at most financial institutions. It works like this. Each year, you decide how much to contribute to your HSA, although there are government-mandated maximums just like with an IRA. You can spend this money on many health-related expenses. Best of all, the money you put in an HSA is invisible to the IRS. You're not taxed on it. Also, you can invest your HSA money just like an IRA. You can use your HSA to pay for approved medical expenses, but you don't have to. You can let the account grow and make money and spend it after you retire. We're just scratching the surface here, but we suggest you look into this powerful savings plan. So far, everything we've discussed has one thing in common. You can set up automatic deductions from your paycheck to fund these savings plans. In other words, you approve chunks of money to come out of your paycheck before you get it. There's no better way to save than to not see the money in the first place. Depending on where you work, your HR and payroll departments will let you set up multiple automatic deductions. You can shunt any amount directly to a savings account so it never tempts you by showing up in your checking account. One great way to save for retirement is to live off the paycheck you have now. And anytime you get a raise, send that money directly to your 401k, IRA, HSA, or other savings vehicle. If you do that every time you get a raise, you'll be saving big by doing nothing. We talked earlier about embracing technology when it comes to budgeting. Well, you can do the same when you plan your retirement. If you search online using the names above, you'll find some powerful tools. You simply type in your personal information, everything from your age to your income, and these secure websites will show you how much you need to retire. All of them do mostly the same thing, although their programming is slightly different. Also, be warned. Many will try to sell you something at the end, whether it's a bank wanting you to invest with them or an organization wanting you to join them. Ignore that and use these calculators to get a more focused picture on where you stand now and where you need to get to. We seldom suggest you pay money to join their organizations, but when it comes to retirement, AARP is actually worth it. While you can peruse the AARP website for great retirement info for free, members get discounts on everything from vision care to pet insurance. Before you join, check out the AARP website and look at the long list of benefits. It's quite likely you'll save much more than $12 a year. If you have a permanent life insurance policy, you might have noticed it has a cash value. Did you know you can make withdrawals and even loans from that? 
Even better, this cash value earns interest, which isn't taxed until you make a withdrawal, and loans aren't taxed at all. Depending on how old you are, this cash value can stand in for an emergency fund, allowing you to save sooner for retirement. And if you never access it, that money can help you in retirement. Since life insurance is taken out by parents of young children, it's often not needed when those children are grown. So, it becomes your retirement policy. Of course, insurance can get complicated, and each policy has its own rules. Then there are the tax implications. So, while you might need to consult an expert, don't forget to ask about these interesting options. An annuity is an insurance product that pays you an income. It can be a great part of a retirement strategy because they offer steady income stream in retirement. So, what's the catch? Annuities also come with fees that CNN once called notoriously high. Some unscrupulous investment advisors take advantage of people by tacking on even higher fees. But annuities can work wonders in certain circumstances. And if you're willing to pay close attention, look into annuities, but proceed with caution. We're not talking about becoming a day trader. Within your 401k and IRA and HSA, you have investment options, but too often we don't really pay attention. These retirement vehicles often let you invest automatically in a middle-of-the-road mutual fund, but CNBC says it is possible to take the set-it-and-forget-it approach too far. You should study those investment options yourself. If you're young, you can invest more aggressively, riding the inevitable ups and downs because you have more time for everything to smooth out. But even if you're approaching retirement, you can squeeze some value out of your investments by simply tweaking them according to best practices. These days, the hot term for making extra money is called side gigs or side hustles. Many Americans are working in addition to their full-time job. One study says it's almost half of us. While millennials were most likely to have side hustles, slightly more than half actually, they're becoming increasingly popular among those approaching retirement age. Millennials might spend their side hustle money on vacations and the latest tech, but older Americans are freelancing from home or working weekends to sock money away for retirement. As you can tell from our big overview here, a lot of what we're discussing requires some attention to detail. We're just hitting you with the broad strokes, especially when you're combining many of these strategies. You might want to consult an expert. Then again, finding an expert can be a chore. Here are a few shortcuts. First, figure out if you want a fee-based or fee-only expert. Fee-based means your expert earns a commission from the different investment options they point you to. That could make them think more about themselves than you. Although, most fee-based experts will tell you that's not the case. A fee-only expert is exactly like it sounds. You pay them to advise, and that's all the money they make. Obviously, fee-only advisors are more expensive. There's no right or wrong decision here, but we can definitely say this. Look for a certified expert that can mean either a CPA or a CFP. While many folks have heard of CPAs, they haven't heard of Certified Financial Planners, or CFP. Neither certification guarantees you a great expert, but it does separate out good from bad. Finally, you can look up experts near you at the website for the National Association of Personal Finance Advisors. This isn't a strategy for retiring early or even on time, but it's the best strategy to plan for. While the years will change depending on when you were born, right now retirees can take their Social Security at age 62. Problem is, their payments will be reduced for starting so early. If you wait till 66, they'll get their full benefit. But if they wait to 70 to start pulling money out of Social Security, they get a bonus of almost one-third. As you can see, the longer you wait, the more you make. If you're in good health now and expect to be later, it's advisable to plan your retirement so you can delay Social Security until at least the full retirement age. Speaking of Social Security, it's a wonderful government benefit. But since it is a government benefit, that means it can get confusing. Anyone who's done their own taxes knows that. But the Social Security Administration actually does a good job of cutting through the clutter. If you set up an account online, you can get a free personalized estimates on your Social Security benefits based on your actual earnings. The SSA even offers audio information on a variety of related government programs that you might qualify for in retirement, like Medicare prescription drug costs and even nutrition assistance. This is one government website you really should bookmark. 
Thank you for joining us today. We hope this helps you find your path to retirement. And don't forget, give us a call if you need any help.